Hi guys, long time no see. Due to my academic sessions, I couldn't actually invest my time in making the videos. But now I'm back with a video on the greatest ever Nazi defense system, that is the Atlantic Wall. The Atlantic Wall was like no other ordinary single weapon system, but was an extensive group of weapons that was combined into a fortification built by Nazi Germany between 1942 and 1944. It was along the coast of continental Europe and Scandinavian defense system against an anticipated allied invasion of the Nazi occupied Europe from UK and the US during the World War. The wall was heavily fortified with a wide range of artillery selections from 30mm handheld rifles all the way to the 380mm huge cannon guns that were being strategically laid on the entire coastline revealing Hitler's dream of a Nazi-driven empire in Europe that would surpass ahead of the Romans and the Greeks. So sit back guys as we roll down the list of the top 9 facts on the biggest Nazi weapon that is the Atlantic Wall. Number 9. The Wall Deadline Hitler issued the order to build the Atlantic Wall on March 23rd of 1942, whose detailed account can be found in his famous Directive 40. The plan called for the construction of 15,000 separate concrete emplacements to be manned by 300,000 soldiers. Since no one knew in the Axis High Command where the invasion would occur, the whole occupied Europe's Atlantic coastline was to be fortified. Astoundingly, Hitler wanted the work to be completed by May 1st of 1942, but as a reality, the war was never completed up to its full potential. Number 8. Ornamentation of the Wall the wall was proposed to be a three-tier system of fortifications running for almost 2,000 miles from the french Spanish border all the way to the northern tip of Norway. Strategic port cities like Brest and Antwerp were to become fortresses, which were the most heavily defended installations. Sites of secondary importance were the military installations and the radar stations, protected by strong points which would be guarded by German batteries and gun positions. Under independent control, the third level of defenses consisted of resistant nests. These less hardened installations featured interconnected bunkers and medium caliber guns as part of their defense. Number 7. The Sheer Size Approximately 1.2 million tons of steel went into the Atlantic Wall. That's enough to build more than around 20,000 Tiger tanks. The Nazi also poured 17 million cubic metric tons of concrete into their defenses, the equivalent of 1100 standard football stadiums. And now that was a huge amount of fortune that were being wasted by the German forces, which ultimately led to the defeat and the devastation of the Nazi empire. Number 6. The Cloud Cuckoo Land in late 1943, when Field Marshal Erwin Rommel inspected the Atlantic Wall for the first time, he thought the Enterprise to be a giant force. The famous Desert Fox described Hitler's strategy for defense as something out of the cloud cuckoo land, as described by Field Marshal. And soon after his this visit, he himself laid upon the core foundations into the wall, strengthening the wall for the next two years. As a result of which the Allied casualties were rocketed sky high when they came up close facing the wall during the conflict. Number 5. The Cost of Building The Atlantic Wall at the French portion that defended the coast like Normandy was laid down at a staggering cost of about 3.7 Reich marks, which is an estimated of about 206 billion US dollars in today's numbers. Number 4. The Belgian Gates The Belgian Gate was the first line of defense for the German as it slowed down advancing Allied forces, hence providing them with a strategic weak point to attack. These were also named as the Sea Element, which was a heavily fenced steel gate about 3 meters wide and 2 meters high, typically mounted on a concrete roller used as a mobile anti-tank obstacle during the Second World War, with each individual fence element weighing approximately around 1200 kilograms and was movable and mobile at the same time. This gave them a great advantage over the Allied forces during the Normandy attacks especially. 
Number 3. The Normandy Casualty the 2,000-mile-long chain of fortresses, gun emplacement, tank traps and obstacles were one of the most impressive engineering feats of modern times. When the British, American and Canadian troops breached the seemingly impregnable Nazi defences along the 80-mile stretch of the French coastline at Normandy, an estimated of 425,000 Allied and German troops were killed on both sides in a single day of battle in the Atlantic. Number 2. Spear the Industrialist a number of more than around 260,000 workers helped to build the Atlantic War, and only 10% of these men were actually Germans. Albert Speer, who was the head of the construction, his organization directed the construction effort using thousands of forced laborers from the prison and detention camp all over Europe and as many as poorly paid local men that they could gather. Speer was assigned to this project as due to his tremendous success rate in his previous projects that included the Autobahn highway system in Germany and also the Siegfried Line along the Franco-German border. Number 1. Tourist Attraction After 1945, the people of France felt that the abandoned defenses were an unpleasant symbol of the occupation and also couldn't break them apart fast enough. Efforts to reclaim the coastline would still take years. It wasn't until decades later that the public began to preserve sections of the Atlantic Wall for prosperity. Many of the fortifications still stand today and draw thousands of tourists annually to the French nation. Hi guys, Infinito here. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If so, do smash the like button and feel free to subscribe and stay tuned till I get back to you next week on a Thursday with a completely new video. Till